What's going on, people? Just want to tell you, I hope everybody has a happy new year. I understand it's been a bit tough over most of the trials, tribulation, especially for most businesses, uh, essential businesses, for most entertainment or sport events that have to be taking place either restrictively or virtually. And uh, for any of those guys that are having trouble finding work, or, you know, struggling to get the job they needed or to be at school. All I can say is hats off for at least being there and being tough. Either than a tough 2020, I need to just... I'm just still got my rant out for 2020 for WWE and pro wrestling in general. But let's just see it off the benefactor of that. Let's see what originated over the decline of content of professional wrestling or WWE's case in general, because uh, whether you like it or not, WWE is literally the at the literal standard of what a professional wrestling business should be. It's a publicly traded, well-known, historic company over majority of the last, you know, century of this planet. And they've been able to essentially monopolize the territorial ages of professional wrestling. Whether you guys like it or not, WWE is the top place to be in to get your name out there. Whether you're wrestling or editing or producing or writing, it will bring you up the door and people will know who you are. And how that came off to being one of the biggest places of of other events you can go to other than a sporting event, it's kind of declined in the last over 15 years and over the loss of mainstream ability WWE has gone been the loss of popularity you don't see a lot of normal fans going you just see wrestling fans you see hardcore fans we have declined over the standpoint of glorifyingly just giving the hardcore fans some of the longtime fans Some of the guys that even watch more of the indie stuff, more focused on trying to figure, you know, shower that, you know, fan base that we've forgotten what can give casual fan bases like kids that just skip over the channels or nowadays they watch over streaming and now they're going to go over to a streaming service that's going to be more catered around what they find interesting like Disney Plus, like Netflix, like ESPN, like Fox. Stuff like that, and more, less and less people are figuratively paying attention to wrestling. And that goes, goes over to the standpoint of practically what most fans got them to go back to professional wrestling. And I'm not saying that the pipe bomb wasn't a bad promo, just people take it as such a work shoot promo. It's so dynamic, it, it helped popularize the sport for still three months. Over the decline later on, yes, it came over to PG. We've had a lack of star power. Our fan base has been so secludedly weird, people get death threats over having a difference of opinion. There's more catering over to hardcore fan bases that want to see more of the Evan Bournes, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins main eventing, And you see the slur of 1.5s, 1.6s. You don't see 3.3 million people watching. Sure, it is not much of the Attitude Era. But that's still an average sun that a lot of people come and watch our show. As people want to complain and be over. WWE doesn't know how to book. Vince McMahon doesn't know how to book. Yes, it has something to do with the decline of creativity in the writing staff. But it also has a decline over over what the fans want and the quality we're getting into the ring. We came from basic, substantial, consumable wrestling that can be at least 5 to 10 minutes of average storytelling to inconsistently do impromptu matches and indie-rific 20-minute slugfest with lackluster storytelling over the span of 2 to 3 months that you're probably going to forget in a week. Three-hour shows of not even that much star power. Batista, John Cena, Randy Orton's over the lack of popularity, even though he's the best in WWE. And the only notable 
a up and coming homegrown star we've been able to produce over most of the time that's at least gathering some viewers to speak positively about the show is Roman Reigns. And in my opinion, that's just not a good look. And over catering to more of the hardcore fan base or the smart marks, smart smarks, whatever. It's caused a downturn shift into interesting storytelling, prime over-the-top characters, and guys that actually look superhuman, like Brock Lesnar, Randy Orton, John Cena, Batista, The Undertaker, Kane, guys that are Chris Jericho, at least guys that have at least a semblance of charisma, like people you want to be like. You have a small dick, wet-haired dude coming around doing knee strikes everywhere. That's inconsistent even the way they want to make him strong. You have Kevin Owens that has a talking ability in average wrestling moves, but built like a guy you had a Bart fight with and you probably won, but you don't remember. You have Sami Zayn that can talk as well, average in the ring, but the guy just can't captivate a casual viewership. And more of the fan base just keep asking for more of the stuff, but also being dissatisfied if they're not getting booked over to win every week. And instead of asking for like cooler storylines or at least an interesting character or a guy that they do have potential with, they cater around over to these small indie dudes that only sum up a bit of a minimal art uh, audience instead of a guy that's going to captivate people to change the channel to watch a show in a majorial setting. You're on a public televised broadcast. You're on USA television, Fox television. And we're only summing up an audience over a uh, totaling of around SmackDown only 3.12 million. Over a 3.3. That was holiday season. That was fine. Everybody would be home. Raw's getting a 1.8. And now that's a substantial standard from over 10 years ago. When we were, uh, like at least 2010. Yes, Raw was mediocre. But you were getting 3.3s. 3.5s. 3.2s. And that's cater around majorial of the fan base, and that's also the mentality of the wrestlers. I've been hearing over most of these stories of guys like, uh, I don't know, Glenn Gilberti, Conan, Triple H, or, or other guys in the business that be like taking abuse by the daily by some of the vets, getting back and getting better. To guys that complain about getting hurt. Asking to walk out and just whine that they that you know out of a job you can't just quit. We're getting essential whiners, and I that's what I hear over most of professional wrestling, and it's just weird off the setting that they want to complain about this all the freaking time. There's like no semblance of ambition, and I see that like a majority of the show. Like, look, most of the indie guys that they just pick up on the daily or just happy to be there or just whine that they're not getting booked well other than working hard and trying to earn their way. As much as Chris Benoit is a piece of shit for what he did back in the day, back in 07, he, the guy did 500 push-ups. If he even got a spot of it off, in his opinion, perfectionist over the ring, the guy was built like a superstar yet undersized, Fan favorite around hardcore and even some of the casual fan bases. And the guy just had just the ability to even gross an audience. The guy looked sincere. He was always looking 100%. Even what he did was heinous. The guy still looked like a... Still wanted to be a main eventer. Who else can you benefact over the standpoint that anybody wants to be a main eventer now? Tell me. Tell me. No one has that type of ambition anymore. The guy that's grateful to be there is great. And you can see why the show like flushes out as much talent as it is. Vince McMahon has to do what he has to do to survive over as a capital business to make sure that it still runs. You should know that it's more smoke on the wheel. He'll let go of these guys when he sees fit, even if it's COVID. It's over selected contracts that they have as employees that they have to see to the letter. That's why third-party content like Twitch and Twitch, YouTube, or anything else they have to do have to be on the watch of the WWE. These guys are not John Cena's. 
They're not The Rock. So if they have that type of ability, Vince McMahon wouldn't be complaining about this. And over the spe- standpoint of how WWE is not as mainstream as they are, look at the decline of the fan base. And we're going to take over this example from the a- NXT fan base. NXT came from a BS mediocre game show to at least fluctuate developing talent into like a developmental third brand garbage schlock that relies primarily on indie guys and work rate, garbage minimal storytelling, and not even building up on the talent that these guys even fluctuate, and they only sum up like mediocre viewership of 600,000. I don't review NXT for those circumstances. Most of the guys either come back to NXT, shred no charisma, no semblance of at least building over a character, and even the guys that they do have potential to have, they have to deal with some of the work rate schlock over to at least produce some interest for Triple H and Will and Regal to go up to the main roster anyway, where they'll get flushed out because they know they have no other interest other than their good wrestling. Why do you think that happened to Finn Balor? Why do you think Nakamura's in the decline? Why do you think Robert Roode's not getting utilized well in a stupid tag team with Dolph Ziggler? Look at that. Do you really only want to blame the, the, the company for not utilizing these guys well? These guys are not ready for television. And the fans just eat it over because all they want to see is like highlights of guys fake kicking each other. All, like, every NXT. We, we had normal people. We had hot chicks back in the Attitude Era. Casual, regular people bringing that over their families. We have now weird, fat neck, uh, neck beard, weirdo pedos. Like, people like Wrestling Otaku, that's a big example. Wearing their weird wrestling t-shirts instead of a regular t-shirt that they don't get off a budget sale in Walmart. So they can cater around these weird indie dudes that they barely even know what the hell is their character. I love WWE to death, and but this is stuff that they, that's gonna get them out of business. And the more they don't hear uh, actual critiques of why they are declining in viewership, popularity, mainstream cl- uh, credibility, stock ratings, it's just gonna keep flush. It's just gonna keep flushing down over the toilet until they end up in the schlock Impact was on. An Impact can get another decline video because those guys don't even know if they're even going to keep most of the, ac- the actual potential that they have. They gave freaking Rich Swan the title. Same guy who kidnapped his own freaking wife. <laughs> but back over to the fans. Over what I've been seeing, there's not more fans talking about over the product. Over a majority of what you're seeing, more of the age group Morally, WWE trying to focus on is bringing over to the child viewership over the PG rating that they had to do back in 08. But who is complaining more about the product? Who is watching more of the product? Over what you're seeing, you're seeing more guys up to the 20 year olds over the 30 year olds. You're not seeing children talk about a, ta- a, ta- a show targeted for them. You're seeing adults complaining about fake fighting. And most of the fan bases want to take it so seriously. They have rant videos over the work rate of Roman Reigns. That's literally the only primordial next-gen star they have. They think the G1 Climax is like the freaking March Madness of professional wrestling. They think if you don't have a shred of charisma, you can do a match worth 30 minutes and you can just and you could just do one decent promo. That means you're dec- you're going to be good enough for the WWE. Let me tell you something. It's not. It's not. If you don't have a shred of charisma, an average gimmick, a decent character, and can at least bring up decent uh, chemi- uh, you know, psychology into a match to make your match make sense and not just you know, sell a super kick and a Canadian destroyer come back later on your head and just do a super kick back. That's not going to captivate over viewerships. That's over. That's overzealous spot filter uh, filler 
So you can just get the fans to do woo stuff, even though more people are going to be like, oh, wow, these are Power Rangers. More of an example over all this. You see why Ricochet is not as big as you wanted him to be when he got signed from NXT? After his brilliant six, uh, five-star match with Will Ospreay back at, I think, the Super J Cup garbage whatever uh, Budokai Tenkaichi. It was overly spotful, fast-paced, Power Ranger schlock, 619 from the outside, apron, Canadian Destroyer, Tornado DDT from the apron, cut garbage super kick because that was probably over th 25 minutes long. With the semblance of the story just being like, these guys want it more. No shit they want it more. Jesus. And I swear barely anybody remembers that match. Except like probably what culture? Just Alex. JD from New York. Because they're bored enough as it is. Because they don't have actually have a real life except YouTube. That sounds mean. But you understand over the standpoint of things. All these smacked fans. Weirdos. Like, freaking wrestling otaku are like the example of the decline of fan bases. Talk to like your classmates, your co workers. I remember back in the day when I was just talking to my little friends, whoever I had around the cafeteria, we would talk about a cartoon show we would watch. Or, heck, did you watch uh, Monday Night Raw and somebody got smacked in the head with a steel chair? Or. Ran over by a car. You don't see garbage like that. You talk like that anymore. And it's over the decline. You no, know, fans not caring. Nobody cares about pro wrestling. Nobody cares about WWE that much anymore. That's that's harsh. And please, please, I'm not trying to say that WWE completely sucks. Even though it's been declining in viewership, I'm I, I still have faith in this company. I'm not saying that it's going to be back over to mainstream credibility, but at least in a decent thing that you could have a conversation with what happened on Raw. Because they're obviously not in the standpoint of being mainstream. And just more WWE just substitute their backwater fast food pro wrestling show. Because they don't make a TV show anymore. They make a pro wrestling show. It's just going to keep fluctuating over viewers. And that's why some of the show is getting boring. WWE, sh Vince McMahon should know that TV is going to sell more harder than the pro wrestling. Just understand that. Make real top guys main event. And then the company will be fine. I like Drew McIntyre. I'm seeing his potential. I like Roman Reigns. He's building up a cool Samoan character, and he's probably going to face the Rock and Goldberg that's going to fluctuate casual viewers. And the more WWE focuses on trying to bring over the outsider demographic over to the, over to the WWE branch and actually feeds over the talent that Vince could be pushing over to, you know, gain back some notoriety around public spaces so people can talk about WWE... We could be back on track to doing something really good. At least try to at least average at least two million, three million viewers. You don't have to try to go back to attitude era regard, attitude era, even though it was the above standard and WWE probably not going to reach out again. That, this is practically one of the better ideas because just work rate is not going to subjugate for a good television program, and WWE should know that. Most of the wrestling fans should know that. The veterans that obviously. We're working when uh, pro wrestling was in a boom period. Should know that. Seth Rollins is not going to sell millions of viewers. Drew McIntyre is going to sell millions of viewers. Sami Zayn is not going to sell millions of view viewers. Big E or Roman Reigns, the, Uso, the Usos, the Fiend. They're going to sell millions of viewers. And if Vince McMahon doesn't know that anytime soon, then it's just a lost cause. And people are just going to sit down watching a three-hour wrestling show that meant absolutely nothing. And by the way, Smarks should stop isolating fan Hardcore fans should stop isolating casual viewers to watching their damn product. All because they only watched it for a year doesn't mean you should just smash on them for being a casual. I heard this once from a freaking YouTuber because a female fan had only six years, 
to watch WWE. And somehow her opinion can't be sort of vital even though it's six years of watching a show. That makes very little sense. And that's just ignorant in your own standpoint. But either than that, that's practically all I have for this video. I, I think I'll bring more like the memorial episode for Dynamite. I'll make sure I'll bring that up. Then my rant video that I'll have later. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hope your 2020 was as better as mine. That's all I could say. Thanks for watching. And if this is the last video you watch from my channel, 